Thanks, Patrick. We will now hear from Alex Shackney showing how free choice isn't really free. We are puppets, controlled, manipulated, predetermined. I want all of you to take a second right now to visualize yourself. Envision the choices and decisions you make on an everyday basis. This might take a while. Everyone ready? All right, now does this picture look like anything you had imagined? Your typical 10-year-old in, in a direct TV commercial, yet something is off. Anyone? Oh, I got it. He's Great. a puppet. Good job, Brady. He is a puppet. <laughs> Confused. Well, have you ever felt like you weren't in control? Or like everything you have done from the minute you were born was predetermined? Well, whether you have or not, and whether you realize it or not, our brains and genetics make our decisions for us. Don't believe me. Oh, excuse me. I'm already born myself. Sorry. Now, just then, subconsciously, almost all of you are tempted to yawn, and almost all of you cannot resist thinking about yawning. Because from the age of four years old, yawning actually becomes contagious. Like contagious laughter or contagious crying, yawning becomes contagious because it allows us to socially bond or empathize with one another. But how does this action relate to our decisions or choices? Well, as I said, yawning allows us to relate to one another and fit in, and to be like others. And this is an immensely influential part of our everyday decisions or our free will. Now, free will is something that we all have since we are all conscious, or at, least, or at least it seems like we are, and we are all rational animals, as a philosopher Aristotle defines a human. Yet, recently, our rationality has been questioned. Our actions, puppetry, as genetics work our strengths. And though the theory of the free will illusion would seem preposterous to any rational animal, it has become a global phenomenon, questioning the ethics of society and the choices we make on an everyday basis. And leading the rebellion against Aristotle's human definition is author and neuroscientist Sam Harris, who agrees we are biochemical puppets, our every action decided up to seven seconds in advance. Harris is a Stanford graduate and has a PhD in neuroscience from UCLA, losing his most recent controversial book, Free Will, in which his most pivotal evidence against free will comes from an earlier experiment with a different neuroscientist, Dr. Benjamin Libet. Libet tested electrical activity in the brain when volunteers were asked to move their wrist. His results were jaw-dropping. <laughs> Libet found that the electrical activity in the brain compared with the decisions, I mean, with the a volunteer's decision to move their wrist showed that we were actually making decisions before we were conscious of making them. This means that our brains consistently and accurately predict decisions up to seven seconds in advance, prompting many to believe that our genetics theoretically make all of our decisions. And there is significant evidence proving our ability to be controlled by genetics. Even Einstein paraphrased it. A man can very well do what he wants, but cannot will what he wants. An example? Well, in 2000, an otherwise extremely normal Virginia man started to collect child pornography and make sexual advances towards his stepdaughter. The man had no prior history to any similar behavior and was in fact a school teacher, described as charming and intelligent. Anyway, after being arrested for child molestation, he was sent to spend time in a rehabilitation center only to be expelled for making lewd advances towards staff members and nurses. Prison came next, but the night before he was to be incarcerated, severe headaches sent him to the hospital, where doctors discovered a large tumor on his brain. After removing the tumor, the sexual obsessions disappeared. Months later, they came back and a scan showed that so had the tumor. Once again, it was removed and once again, the obsessions disappeared. Our brains are proven to influence how we think and act, but this is a wake-up call for just how manipulated we can be. Just a slight shift in the man's genetics and an otherwise admirable citizen begins to commit the most heinous of crimes with absolutely no control over his actions. 
Though he was consciously aware of what he was doing, he was set on a course, and one that he could not control. So, if free will is an illusion, and if our choices are uncontrollable, the question many people pose is, what is the real motivation to live, or to make the choices that we make, if it is all predetermined? Many would view predeterminism as the fact that our lives are merely a lottery, and we are indefinitely servants to the randomized code of DNA that is our genetics. But this would still seem impossible, since every day, even right now, we have the ability, we have the ability to make life-altering decisions. Or do we? Well, it all starts with the question of why we make the decisions we do. Of course, instinctively, food and water are necessities we, along with every living being, desires in order to live. But I theorize that we as humans are spoon-fed information from the first time we open our eyes to the time they shut for good. And in that constant sputter of knowledge, we find ourselves too busy to ask the question why. What is the point of jamming as much knowledge into our brains until it all spills out decades later? And how will the knowledge we learn and the choices we make help us to grow as individuals or become more successful? Well, suppose that information will help you in future years, and supposedly what you learn will lead you to get a good job and build strong relationships. And all of these things tie to the fact that from the beginning of time, we have seek to know things for one reason and one reason only. A sense of security. Security defined as an emotion or a way of thought, opposite to insecurity. Relationships with others make us feel secure, and a good job that pays good money makes us feel secure. And if you look at almost all the actions we as humans take, they all culminate into the fact that we are trying to feel more secure about ourselves and our lives. It is instinctive, a trait passed down from generations and generations of humans written into our DNA and inscribed into our brains. So if security is the hand of our ventriloquist, can we cut the strings? What I'm saying is, over the hundreds of thousands of years, has there been a mutation in this gene or a contradiction to this overlying field? Well, I'll get back to that. So, though many factors do contribute to our everyday choices, in some cases, overwhelming evidence portrays our ability to be influenced by genetics. But in other cases, environmental factors come into play, sparking the prolonged debate of nature versus nurture. Nature would be the neuroscience that shows that we are proven to make decisions up to seven seconds in advance. But nurture is something we all have some jurisdiction over. Nurture would be our environmental factors and parental influence, some of which we have control over, but some of which we do not. In fact, in studies that, in studies that test the, ooh, in studies that test environmental factors that influence the way we think and act, Hundreds show how environmental factors we are unaware of have the ability to make the most influential decisions. For example, college students filling out a questionnaire standing next to a dispenser of hand sanitizer become, at least for the moment, more politically conservative than those standing next to a blank wall. Subjects favor job applicants whose resumes are presented to them on heavier clipboards, and countless other examples show how environmental factors we are unaware of also influence the decisions and choices we make on an everyday basis. Yet, we don't have control over that either. So as we look further and further into the illusion of free will, it seems as if we had been tricked, and that very little leads towards our decisions being consciously made. But even though our decisions may be predetermined, a large contributor contributor to our children's decisions comes from our genetics and our choices. In fact, parental influence molds children in more than just determining their genetic makeup. It can decide the difference between a life as a hero and a life as a criminal. Our upbringing is responsible for the people we become. In a study that tested the variance or the difference between separated twins at birth with virtually the same genetics an estimated 55% of the variance, which means 55% of the difference in each twin's life, was explained by environmental factors, while 37% was explained by genetics. 8% was random. But in this, in this survey conducted on nature.com, 
nurture prevails as the most dominant factor in determining our children's choices. Ironic, if you think about it. So though our genetics are without question predetermined, and environmental factors are a matter of day-to-day -day decisions you or your parents can control, can, you or your parents can control, the debate of nature versus nurture will always have room for argument, which means so will the debate of the free will illusion. But what if nature versus nurture does not hold the answer? Can it be nature and nurture that determine our decisions? And as I said before, is there a contradiction to this overlying feeling of the search for security? Well, in simple terms, no. Our entire lives are predetermined, and free will is without question an illusion. And our choices we make on an everyday basis are uncontrollable. Now, within this concept, you really have three choices. First, you can choose to disregard everything I have just said. Second, you do not realize the impact what I'm saying would mean for society. And third, you have accepted this as a fact and simply don't care. Well, visualize free will, or not having free will, depending on your point of view, as a course or a path. When going on a hike, you follow a path. There are twists and there are turns, there are uncontrolled factors, there are your surroundings, and there is life all around you. In this analogy, the course or the path would be the security that drives our every action and controls our brain. It is the sole reason for which we do not have free will, because we cannot control genetics, environment, and most importantly, our choices. But even though, oh, but, for those of you that understood me and simply did not care, you are most correct in the sense that though we have no control over our actions, we have all control over our interpretation. Interpretation is everything in our lives. Going back to our hike, a surrounding would be an opportunity or any instance in which we have to make a decision. Though we have no control over that decision, we have all control over how we interpret our outcome. For example, one surrounding might be the control others have on us, like a parent to a child. Though the parent has no control over his position or the decisions he has made, he or she has made, they have all control over how they interpret their decisions or position. And the same goes for the child. Though the child has no control over his, his or her decisions or her position, they have all control over how they interpret the decisions and what they find security in. So though we have no control over our actions, we have all control of uh, interpretation is our greatest power. Even Dr. Limit, the neuroscientist that sparked this entire debate, concludes, the greatest gift to which humanity has received is free choice. Though it is true we are limited in our use of free choice, the little free choice that we do have is potentially worth so much that for this itself, life is worthwhile living. So remember, it doesn't matter where you start up or end up. Our interpretation allows us to make life influential decisions. Life is a journey. It is not a destination. Thank you.